different aspects of agency theory, which is information asymmetry. So we are talking about information asymmetry in practical sense of it is like the more we, we look, the less we see form of a situation. Basically, it refers to a situation where one party in a transaction or relationship possesses more or better information than the other party. And if there is a conflict between them, the party that possesses greater and better information wants to use it against the other to achieve self-gain and the like. So in the context of corporate governance now, it refers to the difference in information availability or available to the managers, the agents, the executives and shareholders or the owners, the principals of the company. So the executives possess more information about the organization than the business owners. That is actually logical. But when there are conflicts, that is where the issue really is. So information asymmetry is an imbalance. It's an imbalance and it can lead to conflict of interest when the person possessing the information is not ready to release it and potentially could harm decision making. As agents may exploit or we will, will exploit in many times their superior information that they possess for personal gain while the principal lack the necessary knowledge to effect monitor or mo monitoring to effect monitoring and controlling the agent's action. So basically, this is the basis and the definition of what information asymmetry is. Like I promised in the previous tutorial video that we are going to talk deeply about information asymmetry and how to control heat. So let's look at how to control information asymmetry now. Now we know it's an imbalance. We know a party possesses more information than the other. So it's, a cru it's crucial for effective corporate governance and controlling the information asymmetry, we ensure alignment of the interests between the principal and the agent. And some mechanisms can actually be used and those are the things that we want to talk about now. One fundamental control that we must ensure we put in place is transparency and disclosure. That means we cannot overemphasize in our organizations the importance of transparency and disclosures. Companies should ensure transparency in their operations and financial reporting. Timely, accurate disclosures of financial statements by the executives, performance metrics must be put in place, risk and strategic decisions enable shareholders to make information and judgments and monitor the agents effectively. So the principal must ensure through the board of directors that the executives actually are transparent and they disclose fully the business performance. Then on the side of regulatory compliance or compliances, we need to ensure adherence to relevant regulatory requirements. And of course, the principals must ensure that the agents, which are the executives now, have knowledge of 
what the regulatory compliance really is or the regulatory requirements that they need to comply to really have. Then enforced compliance. So complying with the law, the regulation of the industry will enhance transparency and build trust among the stakeholders. Then another thing that we should ensure is external audit. Ensure engagement of external auditor. So in engaging the external auditor to assess and verify information, the financial statements, we add an independent layer of scrutiny to the reportage, reducing the likelihood of misreporting, misrepresentation, and mismanagement and misstatement of the financial information. I've mentioned three. Another one is reporting standard, ensuring adherence to recognize the reporting standards form of high FRSs, international financial reporting standards, the GAPs, generally accepted accounting principles, promotes consistency and comparability of financial information. When we adhere to these standards, there will be promotion of comparability and consistency. And this is one of what the IAS1 talks about and dealt with in financial presentation. Then I'm going to talk about another control we can put in, in place, which is control in itself. We call it internal control. That is the management, the, the principle must ensure that the management puts systems of controls in place. Implementing robust internal control systems We help in safeguarding the company's assets and ensure the accurate information reporting. Internal control also, we detect, we mit mitigate potential irregularities, fraudulent activities when we put them in place. So the board of directors must help the shareholders to achieve this. Then in the composition, now this is the sixth control we should put in place, independent directors. In the composition of the board of directors, we should ensure that the net non-executive directors and independent non-executive directors are, are, in, are, are put in place and more in number than that of the executive directors. So it ensures that when it comes to some compelling decision making, the shareholders and other stakeholders' interests are protected and have upper hand. So having independent directors on the board who are not involved in day-to-day -day operations of the organization will bring an objective perspective and reduce the influence of information biased insiders. That is, talking about the executive directors using the information available to them to their own advantage, not to further the cause of the organization's interest. Then whistleblowing mechanism should be put in place. Whistleblowers mechanism. So establishing confidential whistleblowing mechanism we allow, especially on the part of employees, to report any unethical behavior, find out wrongdoings without fear of retaliation because if they have fear that there will be retaliation there will be consequence for their whistle blowing they may not blow any whistle and the organization as a result may go down for it at the long run so having whistleblowers mechanisms in place will actually 
be a control mechanism when we are talking about the information asymmetry. So this can help to uncover hidden information. And of, of course, it will de deter misconduct. Then shareholders activism. Shareholders activity, activism, that is engagement. So encouraging active shareholders participation and uh, engagement can assert pressure on the management to increase transparency and address information asymmetry concern. The participation of the shareholders should not be uh, from uh, afar off. That is, they are too distant from their real business. So they should be as close or closer to the management as possible. Maybe through the medium of the board of directors and the like, the chairmanship of the organization and the like. Then let me mention to the performance-based incentive. We put a closure to or a bit of closure to information asymmetry. So when we link executive compensation to performance metrics, is it's going to align at least on the long term the shareholders value and the stakeholders value and interest together and the interest of the organization corporately and we reduce the temptation for the executives to act as a, a form of opportunist or opportunistically if there is any english like that i want to be there is right so performance based incentive we we help when they know that their needs and wants you know they are different they are different when these two are being taken care of through the medium of performance based incentive they know that if they do this they are going to be rewarded for doing it so it's going to further the interest of the organization bring more wealth to the shareholders and also bring more money to the pocket of the executive auditing I've mentioned external auditing. Internal auditing too should be put in place and auditing the auditors too. Yes, auditors too should be monitored. Of course, there are procedures and there are regulations and auditors usually will belong to regulatory bodies. But nevertheless, even especially the internal audits should equally be overseen by the audit committee this is to put layer of control at every stage of our organization's procedure so when we implement all this and many more it's going to ensure control of information asymmetry between the principal and the agents in uh, agency theory on the corporate governance. This is G. James Associates Bengala Tunji FCA has been speaking. Like and comment, share and notify us if there are any other aspects that you want us to talk about. Basically when it comes to corporate strategic management and ethics, everything in the syllabus we had actually dealt with but there could be a chance for oversight or overlook. So if you observe there is a topic, maybe it's not clear to you, or we've not done, or you could not know how to, you do not know how to find it and search it out on the platform, you can reach out to us so that we can deal with it as i'm recapping now what we had dealt with by implementing all these measures that i had spoken about and i'm going to quickly recap companies can address 
the information overload on one side and the information absence on the other side of the principal, which we call information asymmetries concern and equally promote healthier principal agent relationship. Of course, however, it's essential to strike a balance. Don't forget information asymmetry is an imbalance. So it's important to strike a balance as excessive disclosure may also lead to strategic disadvantages for the firm. The companies must tailor their information sharing practices to meet the needs of various stakeholders and protecting sensitive and proprietary data. So equally, information sharing should basically be on the need to use basis. If not, it could be disadvantages, see disadvantages, there could be, it could, it could have demerit sharing every information for disclosure to everybody. I hope we understand who needs what information, who needs to know what about what should be the, the yardstick for sharing information. So we've discussed about transparency and disclosure, regulatory compliance as a form of control, external auditing, reporting standards should be adhered to, internal control, we've spoken about it, independent monitoring and independent directors should be put in place, internal control should be put in place, whistleblower or whistleblowing mechanism should be put in place, shareholders activism and engagement should be put in place, the owners of the business should not be too far from the business. Also, performance-based incentive will help and also auditing the auditors. If we do all this and uh, everyone is not left alone doing everything or anything they have capacity to do, whether it's ethical, whether it's right or wrong, but every everybody has check and balances built around them as a corporate personnel. From Jujin's associate, we are value to life. Next, there will be another interesting tutorial that will be discussing things we are value to your businesses.